Here's the story. When, when I went up to the, the, the Casa Susana, or the Chev, what was the name? Chevalier Cheval Dion. Cheval Dion. I met a young man there. Again, I was 20, 20, 21, 22 years old. And he was much older, 35. That was pretty old. Yeah. 35, 36 years old. And he was a trust fund baby. Trust fund where his parents had passed on and he inherited something like $12 million back in 1962. Now $12 million is a great deal of money, but I'm, I'm then 12 million must have been like 40 million today. So with the money that he took, he bought a brownstone building, and a, 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 he bought a, a, a building on West 10th Street near near uh, Sheridan Square, or that, that the very it was a gay section of Greenwich Village, and uh, he was driving a late model Mercedes, and uh, very nice person, very reserved. Not big on personality, but loved dressing. The, the, his wife had divorced him because of the cross-dressing, uh, give it up or get out. And he had two daughters who were both living with the wife in, in, uh, outside of Washington, D.C., somewhere in Virginia. So he moved, he bought this brownstone, that was a brownstone building, four-story apartment it wasn't a part, it was a house. It wasn't like there were individual apartments in it. It was an entire house. He had a first floor, second floor. Anyway, his name was David, David Wilde. And uh, he was in his mid-30s, late, late 30s. One of the things that he, I don't know if it was, you would call it a fetish, but he loved photographs of cross-dressers, of, of men dressed as women. He, he loved it. He, had out, he showed me a couple of albums, some photographs of himself, and, and I told him that I was a photographer or a videographer in those days. Free, I was a freelance camera op, cameraman, but I, I loved photography. So at the time I had a cheap German camera called an Exacta. This is before Nikon, this is before Canon. It was a single lens camera, but it was very crude. Used 35 millimeter film. So what I used to do was develop it. I, I had a developing, set up a dark room. I bought a cheap a, a machine called an Omega enlarger and I learned how to process Tri-X black and white film. But for him, the deal was I'll buy you supplies. The deal is every time you make a photograph, I want a copy, no matter. So he came to me one day and he said, I would like you to have a better camera, better picture quality, that we should go in for two and a quarters of a camera called the Roloflex. Assist 103, please. Assist 103. To make a long story short, the camera was like a thousand dollars in those days and he paid for it. He bought me the camera and he said I want you to learn how to process color film. Now in those days the, there, were only, there were three types of color film. There was a, 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 a slide film called Kodachrome which could only be processed by Eastman Kodak but there was a transparency film called Ektachrome but it was still very tricky and then there was a color negative film called Kodacolor which anybody could do if you had the proper chemicals, thermometers, filters, and it was a very lengthy process. However, you could make beautiful 8x10 photographs at a fraction of what they would cost. Even though the supplies were expensive, an 8x10 color photographs in those days was selling for like 10 or $12, where I could make one for like a dollar and a half or two dollars. Well, the, the, the money wasn't a big issue. The point is I did learn how to process color film. And um, so he, what he did, he, he made albums. This is, this is important now. This is important. 
he bought these beautiful albums at Bloomingdale's or, or, and heavy leather bound and there were pictures of that I had most you know taken of the people and of this, the resort. A few years later, David gets in his, he, he's involved with the high society in New York, the debutante ball he would go to, and, uh, and he was friendly with the time, the mayor of the city of New York. And he was in that upper, you know, that society where you read in the Sunday news, you know, the Sunday times, the parties, he, David will always popped up. At one of these parties, he met a woman who was a who was a basically an old movie star that they had who ran into financial problems in Hollywood. So uh, her agent got her a job in in New York for a soap opera called Dark Shadows on ABC. It was a, a black and white soap opera based on vampires. It was called Dark Shadows. Her name was Joan Bennett. She had an affair once with Howard Hughes. She, she, there were, t there's old stories about her. There were two Hollywood directors that fought over her. One, one guy shot the. If you go into her biography, it'll all come out. So Joan met David, and they uh, became an item. They started dating and seeing each other, and after about a year. They got married, and one of the reasons they got married because in 1976, ABC dropped the soap opera. They replaced it. The contracts ran out with everybody, so she got married, moved moved in out of the hotel where she was living. She was living in the hotel right across the street from the studio, Des Artiques. It's on the west side. Anyway, she moves in with David. And they get married, she moves into David's brownstone. So they're there for about a year. She tells David, I can't stand living here. I want a garden. This city is dirty, it's noisy, but it's New York. And she would like to move and go to the suburbs. David calls me at home.